Hey guys, Turk here. I hope you're having a good one. Last weekend, I got to recharge my gamer batteries at QuakeCon, one of the largest LAN parties in the world. With nearly 48 hours of good old-fashioned gaming, you guys know I just had to play some Baldur's Gate 3. It has a fantastic story and immersive mechanics, and my goodness, it looks so good. But now that I'm back in reality, can that experience translate back to my living room couch and my trusty Steam Deck? Today, I want to talk to you about the game's limitations, how the game could improve a bit visually, and give you guys my best Steam Deck settings. Grab your D20, let's pass some perception checks. Ugh, I rolled pretty low, so let's start with the quick and dirty options. Baldur's Gate 3 comes with four different quality presets right out of the gate, with plenty of opportunities to tweak, as we'll talk about later in the video. However, keep in mind, by default, FSR is turned on in the balanced mode, but we'll cover FSR in just a sec. For now, let's disable that and look at raw dog performance numbers. When running from the guard checkpoint outside of the goblin camp back to the druid grotto, performance is tolerable. The low preset hits a respectable 39 FPS on average, while medium barely squeaks by with 31 FPS on average. Unfortunately for the Steam Deck, Baldur's Gate's TIE and Ultra presets are just too taxing for Valve's handheld, landing just above 24 FPS and 1% lows oof, right at 14. This makes it sound like there's only a little bit of wiggle room with this game, but how does FSR improve things? At low quality settings, moving from native resolutions to the ultra quality FSR setting instantly buys us an additional 5 frames, or 13%. Going from native to quality mode is a 7 FPS improvement. Going down to balanced almost gets us 9 FPS. I won't even bother going down to performance mode because the quality looks like trash at this point. With medium quality settings, things are looking even better. Turning on ultra quality gets us 6 extra frames, quality mode unlocks 9, and balance mode gets us a whopping 11 FPS. As I said almost one full year ago, FSR is a great asset on the Steam Deck. Unfortunately, Larian Studios only gives us access to FSR 1 for now, which is far inferior to the latest FSR 2, so retweet me asking the devs when they're going to be updating the game with FSR 2. So, if you want to get back to your romantic speed runs with decent quality settings, go with the medium quality settings and FSR in at least quality mode for about 70% of a good time. But pick up that d20 again, we've got a wisdom saving throw. Volo has given me some bardic inspiration earlier, so I of course rolled a natty 20. Have y'all noticed anything off? We're right outside of the druid grove at the beginning of the game, do you guys see anything weird? I sure did, take a look at our utilization charts. Even though our frame rate is hovering around 30 fps here, we are seeing some wild changes in the behavior from the game. When we look towards the bridge in the Blighted Village, we're extremely GPU bound, with the GPU bumping up to nearly its maximum clock speed of 1.6 GHz. But as we turn towards the grotto, the tables turn, and we are now CPU limited, also near the deck's maximum clock speed of 3.5 GHz. This means that even if we get magical quality settings, there's no real good way to guarantee performance, since we'll be CPU gated most of the time. If we dig a little bit deeper, we clearly see that single-threaded performance is our main weak spot on the Steam Deck, which is the main culprit for any of the frame stutters we encounter throughout the game. So with no consistent way to improve frames, 30 FPS will be our target for our gaming session, and unfortunately, we have to use the Steam Deck's full 15 watt mode to keep consistency as high as possible. I tried to save some battery life adjusting the GPU clock speed to about 1000 MHz, but it would constantly dip in those GPU limited spots. I also tried setting the battery to its magic 2 hour mark, but setting the APU to 11 watts, it just starves the system in CPU limited scenarios. Given our 30 FPS target and 15 watt mode, we'd be done here, right? Roll a d20. You failed your deception check. Since we're already at our lower frame rate threshold, and now we're CPU limited most of the time, this gives us room to bump up our quality settings. This game has a lot of settings, some that drastically impact performance, and some that make the game noticeably cleaner, 
and some that just don't affect us in our normal gameplay. The first one you gotta check isn't even in the game, but it's in the quick access menu. Turn off allow tearing. In BG3, it makes the frame time consistency terrible, which alone will help smooth out our gameplay. It won't fix everything, but it's a good start. Next is the texture setting. At low, our system only uses about 7.7 .7 gigabytes of RAM, so crank that sucker up to at least high. With practically no impact on performance and only a modest increase in RAM allocation, improved textures alone will enhance your digital tabletop experience. The rocks on the left don't look like globs of gray, and the improved foliage is a pleasant upgrade. Baldur's Gate 3 was designed for a higher definition experience, so these anti-aliasing settings significantly impact the visuals. By default, the image looks pretty good. We get clear definition in the edges and some slight jaggies in some of those finer edges, but overall, it's pretty serviceable. SMAA, though, it looks over sharp. The rocks in the distance look a lot better. Still, the finer details in the chainmail of my main character, some of those character models, and the moving foliage just looks unnatural. But going to the other extreme, though, is TAA. This looks way too soft. The image does look significantly cleaner, but the definition and separation of the foliage, character details, and the overall presentation just looks too soft. And combine that with FSR, ugh, yuck. Adding salt to the wound, TAA costs us 6% in terms of frame rate, so I recommend either leaving anti-aliasing off or stick to SMAA. This setting will change drastically with future game improvements, so get comfortable with this setting. Shadow quality appears to modify the resolution of the shadows coming across the scene. At the windmill at the Blighted Village, at low, we get plenty of jagged edges from the shadows. Moving up to medium improves it a little bit, but it does cost us an additional frame of performance. High goes the extra step cleaning up the darker areas, but that does impact performance too much for my taste. So for me, medium settings is a good balance on our 7-inch screen. If y'all saw my Diablo 4 optimized settings video, y'all know I love me some ambient occlusion. With the setting disabled, exiting from the grotto is very flat, and it just fails to really capture the essence of walking between two massive boulders exiting a secretive encampment. But turn that setting on, and the rocks instantly show their presence. Sure, it does cost us a few frames, but with the amount of terrain and rocky features in the game, it is well worth the cost. Judging by the tooltip in the menus, model quality aims to improve the geometry of terrain and the objects in the scene. And sure enough, the medium setting looks surprisingly good. Moving it to high does cost us two frames in performance, so keep that setting at medium. Instant distance also behaves just like the tooltip. At low, across the bridge looks really barren, but bumping the settings up to medium, we start to get some of the flowers and the grass from across the way. And if we go to a different road in the high detail settings, we get even more quality coming closer to our character. Surprisingly, high doesn't impact our performance much here either. So go with either the high or medium settings here. Detail distance works similarly, but it looks to impact the amount of foliage actually rendered into the frame. At medium, there are a few extra grass sprouts by the rock on the left, and at high, more pops up across the bridge. Again, performance isn't impacted much, so high is my preferred setting. Now, you'll notice these past few settings, we've been right up next to our characters. In my playthrough of BG3, I am rarely this close to my character, so settings like texture filtering, clouds, and many of the post-processing effects don't typically manifest in a meaningful way. Texture filtering has a minimal impact on performance, so I stick that to 8x. As for clouds, I lost half of a frame going to the high setting, so feel free to go as low as you want to save some frames. I do feel like, though, that the high setting may pay off in certain atmospheric conditions. And the remaining post-processing effects don't impact performance, I turned on subsurface scattering for more vivid, darker environments. As for depth of field, it looks to only work during cutscenes, but it adds that extra layer of cinematography that might help you swoon over Karlak. Fog quality is the bane of the Steam Deck's existence, and in Baldur's Gate 3, it's a lot lighter than, say, Diablo 4. At low, the fog is very apparent, and it's quite distracting sometimes. 
Turning it down to medium does blend the fog a little bit better, but it does cost us a frame or two. High improves the blending significantly, but that also cuts into our frame rate by another frame or two. At Ultra, we have dropped a total of three FPS, or about 10%, in just a static scene, which isn't great. If I'm looking for a balance of performance and visuals, medium is the optimal setting. Now we're getting towards the bottom of the settings barrel. Animation quality settings change the frame rate of the NPCs across the scene. At low, the goblins look rather rigid and could use a bit of smoothing. And at medium, chasing chickens never looked so fun. High adds even more FPS into the mocap, but with our 30 FPS cap on our Steam Deck, we'll likely not see the difference. In a last ditch effort to squeeze performance from the Steam Deck, I went ahead and toggled off both the dynamic crowds and the slow hard drive mode. I thought that dialing back on CPU utilization might have helped us out with the dynamic crowds, but that didn't exactly pan out. Slow hard drive mode claims to load more assets into memory to reduce streaming while gaming. Now, we do have some extra RAM, so why not? Well, it doesn't work as well as we'd hope, so maybe cryo utils would be a decent option with that mix. Let me know in the comments if cryo utils helped you out in this game. Moving from a depressing 30 FPS low experience to a medium high mix experience is a dramatic improvement and visually is a night and day difference. With the CPU bottleneck being ever present, we must temper our gaming expectations with Baldur's Gate 3 and enjoy the finer things in life. Luckily, it's a turn-based RPG, so frame rate isn't critical for the experience, but I do wish it was a bit smoother. Looking forward, I really hope Larian Studios can improve their game with CPU optimizations and the inclusion of FSR 2 in the coming weeks. When those two improvements come, I'll make sure to make a pinned comment with any updated settings with many more hours of game testing. Suppose you want to run these settings on the ROG Ally or any other modern gaming handheld. In that case, the experience will be very similar. The only caveat here will be with the higher resolution screens. You're going to have to run FSR in balanced or even performance mode to get similar frame rates as to what I'm showing here. But keep in mind that those FSR settings will become more viable with the higher output resolution, especially on a smaller screen. But that's all I got to say about my optimized settings for Baldur's Gate 3 on the Steam Deck. I'll go ahead and scroll through the settings one last time so that you guys can take a screenshot and share this with your friends so that all you Steam Deckers can have the best gaming situation possible as you roll the dice, slay some monsters, and of course, have a great time gaming on one of the best RPGs of 2023. Of course, you guys can catch me over on Twitter at the Turk, and make sure you guys come back to the community tab. I'm gonna be putting some polls up wondering what you guys wanna see from upcoming videos. I've got a lot of graphics cards to look at as well as Starfield coming around the corner. So I definitely am looking for your input. But thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.